Welcome to Facts Not Forecast, your daily edge in the stock market, facts, insights, and opportunities you won't hear anywhere else. Today, we're cutting through the noise, leaving behind the usual headlines to dive deep into a sector that's quietly but powerfully delivering real medical breakthroughs. Exactly. While the market's attention often buzzes with the latest in AI, uh, we're pulling back the curtain on biotech. Our mission for this deep dive is really to extract those crucial nuggets of knowledge from your sources, examining specific companies that aren't just promising, but are truly making tangible advancements. Right. And this, in turn, is creating significant opportunities for, well, astute investors. We'll be looking at their innovative technology, their financial health, and, of course, the inherent risks. All right, let's unpack our first company then. We're starting with CRISPR Therapeutics, ticker CRSP. I mean, it's a name that's become virtually synonymous with revolutionary gene editing. Yeah, it really has. It's hard to talk about the future of medicine without mentioning CRISPR, right? <laughs> Absolutely. What truly sets CRISPR Therapeutics apart is their proprietary CRISPR-Cas9 platform. It's a foundational technology for editing genes with um, incredible precision. They're developing gene-based medicines for serious human diseases, ranging from genetic blood disorders like hemoglobinopathies, so that includes conditions like sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia, mm -hmm, right. to advanced CAR T cell therapies for cancer yeah. and even you know groundbreaking work on type 1 diabetes. The critical milestone here, though, is the recent approval of Cascavy Y. It's a first of its kind gene editing treatment for both sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia. This isn't just a new drug. It's well, it's a paradigm shift. Impressive technology indeed. A real game changer. But okay, for our listeners, what does this look like on the financial ledger? CRSP currently holds a market capitalization of about US $5.1 billion, with its share price sitting around US $56.26 as of uh, September 12, 2025. Simply, Walsen indicates it could be potentially 30.7% undervalued, the fair value estimate of $81. Analysts, on average, forecast a one-year price target of U.S. $81.23, though it's crucial to note there's quite a wide dispersion in those estimates. That kind of hints at the inherent uncertainty, doesn't it? It absolutely does. And this brings us to a crucial point for investors, the path to profitability. While the company's revenue is forecast to grow impressively, like 60.76% per year, CRSP is currently operating at a significant loss. We're talking negative TTM that's trailing 12 months earnings of minus US $467.80 million. Uh -huh. And what's maybe even more telling is their negative gross margin. So they're losing money on the fundamental cost of producing their therapies. They are not forecast to become profitable over the next three years. Now, this isn't necessarily a flaw, you see. It's more a clear characteristic of pioneering, long cycle innovation. Okay, right. A long game. Exactly. It underscores that an investment in CRSP is truly a bet on scientific breakthroughs outweighing near-term financial metrics. It requires, well, maybe even a multi-decade investment horizon. We've seen some mixed messages regarding their flagship product, Kazgevi. Some news sources report an, quote, uninspiring start in terms of early adoption, mm -hmm. while others highlight its potential as the tip of the gene editing iceberg, noting its active presence in 35 treatment centers. It certainly sounds like a marathon, not a sprint. For this kind of revolutionary therapy to really, you know, penetrate the market. Absolutely. And the management, led by CEO Sam Kulkarni, is experienced. Average tenures of almost six years for the team and board, which, you know, offers some stability. However, Kulkarni's total compensation, $33.18 million largely performance-based bonuses, is notably above average for similar size U.S. companies, especially considering the company's current unprofitability. Yeah, that compensation figure, particularly for an unprofitable company, that often raises red flags for value investors, doesn't it? What's the counter argument for this level of executive pay? Or I guess, what message does it send about the board's confidence in future growth? Well, it's a valid concern, absolutely. And one investor should definitely scrutinize. The argument you often hear is that such compensation packages are structured to attract and retain, you know, top tier talent in these highly competitive, high-stakes fields like biotech. Hmm, okay. Talent acquisition. Right. The large bonus component is typically tied to achieving significant milestones, things like regulatory approvals or clinical trial success, which are obviously crucial for a company like CRISPR. So while it impacts the bottom line now, the board might be signaling their strong belief that these leaders are essential for unlocking that massive future value, particularly given the well, unprecedented nature of their work. Okay, that makes sense. So for CRSP, summing it up, we're looking at cutting edge innovation, truly high growth potential, 
but it comes with significant unprofitability in the near term and a beta of 1.81. That indicates substantially higher volatility than the overall market. That's a good summary. High risk, potentially high reward. Now, let's shift gears quite dramatically to Vertex Pharmaceuticals, VRTX. In stark contrast to CRISPR, this seems like a much more established and uh, financially mature player in the biotech landscape. That's an excellent way to put it. Vertex, yeah. They spearhead the discovery, development, manufacturing, and commercialization of small molecule drugs. Their core areas are broad and impactful. Cystic fibrosis, infectious diseases, autoimmune diseases, cancer, neurological disorders. Quite a range. It is. And a major recent breakthrough, which has garnered significant attention, is the FDA approval of Jernamex. It's a non-opioid painkiller. This is a monumental development, really, as it represents the first new class of painkiller in over two decades. It addresses a massive public health need. Wow. First new class in 20 years. Yeah. They also have other key products like Aleftrek, and notably, they co-developed the gene therapy Cascibi with CRISPR, which we just discussed. Ah, right. The connection there. Okay, so that's a powerful portfolio. Let's talk scale and stability here. VRTX commands a massive market cap, U.S. $101.88 billion as of September 13th, 2025. The current share price is U.S. $394.53. Simply, Wallacent suggests it's significantly undervalued by a substantial 44.8%, with a fair value estimate stretching way up to U.S. $714.65. That's a big number. It is. And analysts seem quite confident, too, with an average one-year target of U.S. $479.64. And notably, they're within a statistically confident range of agreement, which suggests, you know, less speculative dispersion than we saw with CRISPR. Exactly. And connecting this to the bigger picture, Vertex offers that strong contrast to CRISPR in terms of financial maturity and a proven business model. Mm. They're highly profitable. We're talking TTM earnings of U.S. $3.64 billion and boasting a very healthy net profit margin of almost 32%. 32%, nice. Yeah, 31.86%. Their revenue growth the last year was 10.5%. Right. And when we look at their P.E. ratio, the price to earnings ratio. It tells you how much you're paying for earnings. Exactly. It stands at 27.8x. This is generally considered good value when you compare it to their peers' average of about 40.4x. So it indicates a profitable company that isn't, let's say, excessively priced relative to its earnings. Looking at performance, while VRTX has seen a dip about negative 18.72% over the last year, its five-year change is a robust positive 48.66%. And what's also appealing for many investors is its lower volatility, it's got a beta of 0.51, suggesting it moves much less dramatically than the broader market. This precisely highlights Vertex as a prime example of a biotech company that has successfully navigated that challenging, often decade-long development process. They've achieved consistent profitability and delivered multiple impactful medical solutions. It's really a case study in how long-term investment in R&D can mature into a stable, highly profitable enterprise with significant market power. Okay, but you mentioned Jernavex, the new painkiller. Well, that's a huge breakthrough. The painkiller market is notoriously competitive, isn't it? And there's a lot of regulatory scrutiny, especially after the opioid crisis. That's a really important consideration. Yes. Are there specific challenges or you know competitive pressures Vertex is likely to face here? Or is this a relatively clear path to market dominance for Jernavex? Look, it's rarely a clear path in pharma, especially pain management. While being a first-in-class non-opioid is a huge advantage, no doubt. The pain market is vast and diverse. There are many existing treatments, lots of generics, alternative therapies, new things always in development. Right. So Vertex will face competition. Their strategy will need to focus heavily on broad market access, physician education, and demonstrating really clear long-term safety and efficacy data to truly carve out a dominant position. And the regulatory environment, that remains a constant watch point for any pain management drug. Always. Got it. Okay, next up we have Transmedics, TMDX. This sounds like it's addressing a truly fundamental, maybe even life-saving challenge in healthcare. What truly sets Transmedics apart, I think, is its position as a commercial stage medical technology company. They are fundamentally transforming organ transplant therapy. Their OCS platform, that's organ care system, is absolutely crucial for patients facing end-stage organ failure. I mean, think about it. Organs for transplants are incredibly scarce and perishable. Right. The time pressure is immense. Exactly. Their technology allows organs to be preserved and assessed outside the body. 
this could potentially expand the donor pool and improve outcomes significantly. And you've got global demand for organ transplants coupled with ongoing healthcare modernization efforts. These are powerful tailwinds for the company. Okay, let's look at their financial journey. TMDX has a market cap of around US $3.99 billion, shares trading about US $114.57. Simply, Walsaint indicates it could be significantly undervalued by 63.6%, with a fair value estimate soaring up to U.S. $315.10. That's a huge potential upside. It is. And analysts seem to be in good agreement, forecasting an average one-year price target of U.S. $138.88. Exactly. Now, in terms of growth, Transmedics has shown, well, remarkable performance. Their TTM earnings stand at U.S. $71.66 million. And critically, earnings grew by an astounding Get this, 200, 288.7% over the past year. 2,000%, wow. Yeah. Their last reported quarterly EPS earnings per share of 92 cents was a massive 104.44% surprise compared to estimates. Revenues forecast to grow 21.52% per year. However, and here's the but, if we connect this to the broader investment landscape, their P.E. ratio of 54.5x is quite high. It's deemed expensive compared to peers and the industry average. Okay, so that growth comes at a price, valuation worth. Exactly. That elevated valuation often reflects those high growth expectations. They also carry a notable debt-to-equity ratio of 160.6%. That means they're relying more on borrowed money than shareholder equity, which is definitely a factor investors should keep an eye on. Right. So despite that rapid, almost explosive growth, there are valuation and debt considerations that investors really need to balance. Absolutely. Yeah. But their growth drivers are compelling. Expansion into new organs beyond just heart and lung, developing next generation products, the reliability of recurring service offerings, and even leveraging their unique aviation fleet to transport organs efficiently. That's quite something. And an aviation fleet. Interesting. Yeah. And the CEO, Lead Hassanein, has an impressive 27 years of tenure. That demonstrates incredible long term leadership. Though it's worth noting, his compensation has also seen a significant increase alongside the company's impressive earnings growth. Perhaps seen as more justified here given the strong financial performance compared to, say, CRISPR. Mm, interesting comparison point. Okay, now for our bonus deep dive, we're looking at Twist Bioscience, TWST. This one's a particularly interesting because it's currently trading right near its 52-week low. It's like finding a potential diamond in the rough if the rough were, you know, at a deep discount. That's a great analogy. Twist Bioscience is fascinating because it develops a proprietary semiconductor-based synthetic DNA manufacturing process. Their technology platform isn't just innovative, it's really fundamental to their growth story. A key recent development is their new Express Gene Service. It offers NGS verified genes, that's next generation sequencing, verified in a remarkably fast 5-7 business days. That's speed and precision critical for researchers and drug developers. Okay, speed is key there. The current price for TWST is around US $25.31, very close to its 52-week low of $24.07. Yet simply while Saint pegs its fair value way up at US $98.98, that suggests it's a whopping 74.4% undervalued. And analysts on average have a one-year price target of US $40. That's a significant disconnect between the current price and where analysts and valuation models see it going. It really is. And financially, while TTM earnings still show a loss minus U.S. $208.73 million. The last quarter actually saw a positive net income of $20.39 million. That was a remarkable 151.85% surprise over estimates. So that could indicate a potential turning point. A positive surprise. Okay. Yeah. Sales growth is robust, up 22.7% over the last year, and they boast an impressive five-year average sales growth of 37.6%. What's more, if their balance sheet looks quite healthy, over $250 million in cash, minimal debt. That provides a cash runway for more than three years. So significant financial flexibility to keep going with R&D and expansion. Okay, here's where it gets really interesting for investors, especially with that price disconnect we mentioned. Our sources note significant institutional buying from major firms like ARK Invest, alongside others such as UBS and T. Rowe, contributing to a massive volume surge. Oh. That's a powerful signal, isn't it? Strong institutional interest in twist bioscience, despite its current low price and, well, recent performance. It absolutely is. This really highlights a classic biotech scenario. Mm -hmm. You've got immense potential driven by strong growth and a healthy cash position. But also significant recent stock price declined down about 43% over the last year. Their PS ratio price to sales is 4.2x. That's considered pretty good value compared to peers and industry averages, though maybe slightly above its fair PS ratio. So institutions are seeing value. It seems like it. The institutional buying strongly suggests that, well, smart money sees this dip as an opportunity. 
they're likely betting on the long-term potential of Twist's foundational technology and that strong balance sheet to eventually translate into sustained profitability and a higher valuation. It's a textbook example, really, of patient capital stepping in during a market downturn for a company with strong fundamentals and innovation. Okay, let's unpack this then for our listeners. What does this deep dive, looking at these four distinct companies, tell us about the broader biotech sector and what might be truly driving this institutional interest, particularly from a firm like ARK Invest that we mentioned? Right. If we connect this to the bigger picture, what's fascinating here is the sheer breadth and, frankly, the depth of innovation we've covered today. From the precision of gene editing with CRISPR to Vertex's maturation into a highly profitable drug developer to Transmedics revolutionizing organ transplantation and Twist Bioscience literally building the foundation of synthetic biology. I mean, these companies are delivering real medical breakthroughs. Tangible stuff. Exactly. Tangible stuff that's fundamentally reshaping human health. And this impact, combined with the promise of future revenue streams from these breakthroughs, is precisely what draws the attention of institutional investors. They're looking for those long-term growth stories. And biotech, despite its volatility, offers that potential for you know, exponential impact. Hmm. We saw this directly with Swiss to Bioscience, right? Sources highlighting significant buying from ARK Invest, UBS, T. Rowe. This indicates a clear appetite for innovative companies in the biotech space, even those with uh, developing financial profiles. So they're willing to look past near-term losses for that potential. Often, yes. Institutional investors are often willing to pay an innovation premium, recognizing that today's scientific advancements are tomorrow's market leaders. Okay, so what does this all mean for someone looking at this space, trying to maybe discern opportunity from speculation? Well, this raises an important framework for you to consider, I think. The biotech sector is absolutely characterized by both high risk and high reward. We've seen that clearly. But within that, there's a spectrum. On one end, you have highly profitable, established players like Vertex. They represent proven execution and sustained disruption in, well, established areas. Lower risk, potentially lower, but steadier reward, maybe? Sort of, yeah. Then on the other end, you have earlier stage, high growth companies like CRISPR and Twist. They are in earlier stages, often focused on massive revenue growth and groundbreaking science, where profitability is a future aspiration rather than a current reality. They represent more of a bet on future market capture in nascent transformative fields. Higher risk, potentially much higher reward way down the line. Precisely. The core insight for you as an investor is discerning where on that risk reward spectrum you find your edge. It's really about understanding which kind of bet aligns with your personal investment strategy and your time horizon. That's a great way to frame it. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive into biotech's leading innovators. We've definitely just scratched the surface of how medical science is translating into market opportunity. Now, do you want a follow-up episode on ALK's other biotech holdings, maybe Intellia and 10X Genomics? Drop a comment below and let us know. And remember to subscribe to Facts Not Forecast for more insights. And as you reflect on these companies, maybe consider the profound impact that medical innovation has, you know, beyond just stock prices. What technological breakthrough will be the next one to truly transform our world, our health, and in turn reshape the market landscape entirely? Something to think about. Definitely food for thought. Appreciate you tuning in. Until next time, stay sharp, stay patient, and let the market work for you.